Build it back, just watch Craig. How's that? Can you see her now? All right, guys, that's about as far as I can go, but at least we can see her and we're able to actually get some sort of view on some spots. There we go. Hello, Tandy. How are you, my girl? So that is Tandy for sure, definitely with that sort of pinkish nose and then those bars that run across her left eye, which James used to ID her the other day when she was with Shongile and Vula. And she's looking as beautiful as ever. And hopefully we'll start to see her yawning a little bit and that will mean that she's going to get up and move. I might be able to actually go back slightly more so we can actually see her face. Just give me two more seconds. Sorry, Craig. How's that? Can we see her face or a bit more? A bit more. Hold on, Craig. There we go. All right. Now I've put Craig unfortunately into a bush willow but at least now you've got a fairly clear visual of her face and I believe a lot of you are very happy to celebrate feline Friday with the most beautiful well in my opinion the most beautiful leopard that we see out here she's fantastic I love little Tundi she might be small but she packs a serious punch and she is a very very pretty leopard seems a very tired leopard too you can see the eyes are closing from time to time and she's starting to rest but isn't that the perfect place for a leopard Look at that camouflage, and you'll see when she drops her head down, she becomes almost invisible. If it's not for that little white tail flicking up from time to time, that's the only reason that we're actually seeing her, is because that little white tail flicks, and then that's how we're able to find her. Yes, we're talking about you. Hello, girl. Isn't that the most piercing stare? She definitely has a look about her that can strike fear into most people's eyes and I've seen Tandy actually be very aggressive with a number of different trackers in the time and she's one of those that some of the trackers are quite scared to track because she often does show teeth and come flying out of bush towards you particularly when she's got cubs around so you have to always be a little bit respectful of Tandy and Shadow Uh, Beard, you say this leopard has a permanent look of concern on her face. I, I'm not really sure that she does. I'm maybe I never really noticed that. She always looks as though she's serious, though. That's I will say. She kind of gives you that look, and when she looks at you, you know that she is definitely something that will be able to dominate you. But isn't that beautiful? Look, now that she's looking up, I don't know if she looks so concerned. This is more as if she's just sort of going, "You guys again? Do you have to come and look at me? Can't you leave me in peace?" That's kind of the look I always feel that she gives us. And I think she's going to flop back down shortly. There we go. And you've got to use your paw as a pillow when you're tired in the afternoons. Oh. So I believe a lot of you are commenting on just how pretty she is. And like I say, she is, a, for me, one of the prettiest females that we see out here. Now you can see what I was talking about with in terms of camouflage. I mean, that's quite zoomed in. From where I'm sitting, it is really very difficult to see her. And if you drove past her, the chances of you seeing that are almost zero. It is perfect, perfect camouflage. And the way that those spots just help melt that sort of body into that mound is quite phenomenal. And particularly in areas like this where you get the spotted pattern or this dappled light. That spotted pattern really blends in very well. So super good camouflage and it's why they utilize areas like this. And Tundi for some reason absolutely loves this area. She seems to be completely fond of this particular drainage section. She seems to really want to spend a lot of time here. And most of the times that she's come to Juma, that's where she's been. So there you go, spot the leopard. That's for those of you who like screenshots. If you can take a screenshot of that and try and see show people and ask them to spot what animals in there. I guarantee most people won't be able to see that leopard. It looks like just one of the branches. If you look at the branch lowest in the screen there, you'll see it kind of has the same similar highlights as to what she does lying on the mound. Pretty incredible. And we'll get the odd ear flick from time to time. Also what you can see is look at the size of her paws. That front paw, massive in comparison to the back paws. Leopards, it's a lot more noticeable than what you'll see with Lions, lions tend to have, you know, big front paws, but their back paws also tend to be quite bulky, but leopards really always look like their front paws are almost double the size than their back paws. And remember, she doesn't have 
the biggest feet out of all of the leopards that we see here. She's actually got quite a small track, much like what we see with Shadow and even little Shongile. It seems to be a trait of Karula's daughters as most of them are quite small, small feet, and yet they all pack a serious punch. And I was saying earlier that Tundi is one of those females that I've seen bring down animals way, 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 way bigger than what she is. We've seen her hunt fully grown female Kudu, fully grown female Waterbuck. Now both of those animals weigh probably, I would say, six, seven times what she weighs, yet she's able to bring them down and wrestle them down. The f problem is with her is she often targets these big animals and unfortunately loses them because any time you're going after something the size of a kudu and you're that size, there's no way she can take it up into a tree. And so you get a situation where she has to forfeit it to hyenas inevitably, but it doesn't stop her from trying. She definitely is not scared of going after a larger prey source if the opportunity presents itself. And I wonder if we've seen now her kind of leaving Tumba behind now, because it's very seldom we see them together. And it seems like, you know, the last time we saw Tumba, the last few times we've seen Tumba, he's been on his own. So I wonder if she's starting just to break that process up now in the event that he's going to start slowly but surely pushing away from her. Now, Carly from Costa Rica, you asking, is the, her, lip, her fur as soft as it looks? Well, Carly, I don't know. I've never touched her fur, but from other big cats that I've seen, and I mean the lions that we that I darted when I was on my leave, their fur is not as soft as you think. It's a lot more bristly than what you would expect it to be. It's not like a cat's fur that's maintained and brushed and looked after. It's a little bit more rougher and bristly and harder than what you would see with a domestic cat. They obviously do have soft fur on their tummy and around their chin area but that's fur on the sides is a little bit more bristly it almost reminds me of like a short-haired dog in terms of the feel if you want to call it that so if you ever stroked one of the short-haired dogs around the world with many different species then you would know that it's a little bit more bristly and rougher than it is soft and velvety i think our girl is going to have a very long nap to this afternoon before she decides to actually get going Tony, she is a very sleepy kitty, and it's probably because she's been moving most of the day. If she was seen here, it means that she's gone all the way from Torchwood area, which means she's probably marched most of the day. And it's not an uncommon trait that we see with both Shadow, Tandi, Karula used to do it, and we see it with Shongila and Hosanna too, is that they are very prone to walking during the day. Now, if you hear a few bushes, it's just Craig trying to get himself out of a bush willow that I've put him in, so I'm sorry about that, Craig. But they like to walk a lot and then this time of the day they'll rest and they wait for that sun just to get down a little bit lower. Remember most leopards are crepuscular which means that they're active more at dawn and dusk and they will spend a lot of the time resting in between that and so that sort of half an hour before the sun sets and then going into the time after the sun sets is when a leopard is very active and then again just before sunrise they start to move around a lot. They actually reckon that leopards and the studies that they've done sleep a lot during the middle periods of the night. They actually don't move around much except for Tingana who seems to just never stop moving. He's always walking around. Um, you'll find that most leopards actually are quite rested during the middle parts of the evening unless there's an opportunity to hunt. You, you know there's often times when they'll stumble across an impalas or impalas will stumble across them and they'll then have a go but for the most part their peak activity is just after sunset and just before sunrise and that's why they got the crepuscular name. What have you heard girl? Nope. It's almost like she's, it's too bright for her and she's putting her paw over her eyes as if to cover them and sort of block out the light. But she is so pretty. And I'm so glad to see her. I haven't, well, I can't remember the last time I actually saw Tandy. I think it was that day just before I went on leave when we had her and Tumba drinking and then chasing those waterbuck around the main road near Chitwa side. So I haven't actually seen her for quite some time. And it's good to see her. She looks healthy as, as ever and looking strong and fit. And I, like I say, I wonder if she's not starting to come into estrus cycles and that's why she's been away from Tumba the last little bit. I know that while I was on leave, I believe that Tingana and Kuchaba and Tandi were all in the same sighting and that Tingana was showing quite a bit of interest in both Kuchaba and Tandi. And maybe both those leopards are coming into estrus and that's why. She's separated from Tumba for a bit. I wouldn't worry about Tumba just yet, a young male leopard. 
as we saw with Asana, disappeared for a few weeks before we saw him again when Karula disappeared. So I'm sure he's around and we'll definitely try and pay attention and try and find him. But we're going to spend our afternoon with the beautiful Tandi because, well, why not? We've been looking for Leopard for the last few days and we've been rewarded with a be- one of the most beautiful cats out here. And so while we sit here and wait for her to start waking and to start getting active, let's go across to Taylor McCurdy, who has got something that's maybe not quite as pretty, but is definitely worth a look. <laughs> 